Today, I am giving you a third episode on Florentine legends. And the one we're looking at will be a fascinating one. So, it will be on St. John Gualbert, in Italian, San Giovanni Gualberto, and his nodding crucifix. Now, the story on his life can be seen on this very interesting polyptic by Giovanni del Biondo. It starts on Good Friday of 1028. Giovanni Gualberto was searching for his brother's murderer on a dead-end street in Florence. And it was Good Friday and it was three o'clock and Giovanni was armed while his brother's murderer was walking. So it was three o'clock and he was reminded of Christ on the cross. So he got off his horse, embraced the murderer, and both went to San Miniato to pray. And the crucifix nodded in approval. So Gualberto immediately decided to join the abbey of San Miniato to become a friar there. But lo and behold, he realized that Abbot Hatto and the Bishop of Florence, well, Guarinus, had bought their positions from the Emperor. So he immediately went down to Florence and accused them of simmery in the old market in today's Piazza Repubblica. Obviously, the, the Old Market is very near the Bishop's Palace and the Duomo. So the Bishop's followers practically stoned him to death. He was almost killed and he had to flee Florence and went to Vallombrosa in the mountains and founded the Vallombrosan Order to fight simony in the church. Now, you're looking at the panel on the left with Giovanni Gualberto and Peter Ignis doing the trial by fire. Why? Because Gualberto Dina practically told everyone that Pietro Mezzabarba was guilty of simony. And it was typical of the Middle Ages to do a trial by fire. If you were able to walk through the flames, a pyre at either side of you and a narrow passageway between, if you were able to pass without being burnt, that meant that you were innocent. Now, Obviously, Mezzabarba would not do the trial by fire, so one of the friars volunteered to do it in the Abbey of Settimo, seven kilometers from Florence. And Peter, Fra Peter, Fra Peter Ignis walked through the flames since Mezzabarba refused to undergo the trial and he came out unharmed. So that proved that Mezzabarba was guilty and he had to leave Florence. Fra Pietro, Peter Ignis, came out unharmed, but he was almost killed by everyone trying to steal or get a piece of his habit as a souvenir. Now, the so-called Gualberto cross that nodded to Gualberto 
is not the real one. That cross is now in the Vallum Rosen Church of Santa Trinita, the Holy Trinity, in Florence. In fact, this cross was done in the, 50, in the 15th century, in the early Renaissance, and it was done for Michelozzo's Ciborium, dedicated to San Giovanni Gualberto. And as you see, the background panels are part of a Gothic polyptic done, of a Gothic polyptic uh, done by Andrea Orcagna from 1394 to 98. And the cross is in Santa Trinita because Grand Duke Cosimo III of Tuscany had it transferred from San Miniato to Santa Trinita. Remember, Santa Trinita is right across from Ferragamo that you probably remember. Now, always from the Cenobium, you have the Piero de Gauti's personal symbol, a relief by the early Renaissance master Luca de la Robbia. And the relief is, shows you Piero de Gauti's symbol of a hawk holding a ruby ring on its right claw. Now, as you see, uh, that Piero de Gauti also sponsored, also funded, the temple around the Annunciation fresco in the Santissima Annunziata, which I did in my second episode. And just think that the carved inscription in that temple tells you the amount of gold florins he paid for it. Obviously, he wanted to show everyone how generous the Medici were. Now, this is the symbol of the Kalimala Guild. The Kalimala Guild was one of Florence's major, seven major guilds, and it sponsored the works of San Miniato, they, uh, they paid for the Greek and white, green and white marble paint facing on the facade of San Miniato. If you look carefully, you can see the eagle on top of the temple, obviously telling you that they paid for it. And the Gilded bronze eagle on the ciborium in San Miniato was done by Maso di Bartolomeo, an early Renaissance sculptor that was trained by Donatello and, uh, as, and Michelozzo, and he was an amazing goldsmith. In fact, that eagle is done with gold leaf. And the bundle of cloth obviously tells you that the eagle was ready to fly back to their points of origin because it was imported wool. The Kalimala guild processed and refined foreign wool brought from England and the Netherlands. Just think that even today, up until very recently, Pringle of Scotland and Burberry's had their cashmere sweaters and their wool done in Prato, which was part of Florence at the time. Now, they also did, they also funded the baptistry. In fact, they funded the three doors into the baptistry. And the famous 1401-1402 competition 
for a new set of doors, now the north doors of the baptistry, were sponsored by the Kalimala Guild. And as you know, that is perhaps a corny statement, but that competition opened the doors into the Renaissance. Now, you're looking at the Vallum Rosen Abbey of St. Michael the Archangel, San Michele Arcangelo, in Passignano. Fra Giovanni Gualberto, St. Giovanni Gualberto, died in 1072 and is buried there in the abbey. Now, this abbey was expropriated from the friars by Napoleon Bonaparte and it was sold and turned into a castle. In 1987, the Vallum Rosen friars returned to the abbey, and the vineyards around the abbey belong to the Antinori family. Remember how Gonzaga in Florence had its seat in Palazzo Antinori until 2003, when it moved to Via La Pira. My dear students, I hope you remember Aula 1, where we had our art history, and next slide, please. Now, all I want you to do is to have a wonderful Merry Christmas, a Buon Natale, and a Happy New Year, a COVID-free New Year. Buon Natale. Tomasha Firenze, e lei è la tua città ed anche lei di me, io porto il tuo bacio a Firenze, già mai o mai potrò scordarmi te, sei figlia del migrante per questo sei distante, ma stai sicura un giorno a casa torre.